Good morning. I'm back today and I'd like to talk about figurative language some more, specifically shadow and reality and what philosophers might call platonic dualism. Shadow and reality comes from Plato's Republic where he uses a famous analogy of the cave. In this analogy, people are trapped in a cave where all they can see is shadows and they can never turn around and see from the mouth of the cave what it is that's going by and casting these shadows. Now for Plato this describes the human condition when uh, reality actually exists in two components or two dimensions. There's the visible reality of the material world and there's the invisible reality and the realm of ideas. Uh, later Christians would take this Platonism to talk about ideas existing in the mind of God and the invisible reality of the soul and other things that we can only see shadows of, but the reality is bigger. Now the New Testament speaks of shadow and reality in Colossians and also in Hebrews. And so the uh, authors who are writing in Greek are well aware that uh, Greek philosophy has brought this dualistic uh, component to their, their language and to be able to talk about something that's just a shadow, like in the material world, and something that it's actually pointing to a greater reality. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4.18 in fact, tells us that we don't fix our eyes on what is seen, because what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And it's these eternal things that figurative language gives us access to as we recognize that an analogy is being made or a parallel is being drawn, and it's the same thing that Jesus is able to point to through parables as he casts alongside these notions from the material world, things we can see that tell us about things we can't see. I like to think of some of the uh, work that we're doing in the invisible realm as uh, uh, building a building and standing on scaffolding to do it. That the material world is uh, temporary, much like the scaffolding that you would put up around a building that you're uh, working on. The scaffolding is necessary as something, it's a, like a platform, something that we stand, stand on. And in fact, our, our physical bodies and this material world that we live in is necessary for us to enact the uh, actions and uh, to participate in experiences and events which actually shape our eternal destiny. So much like the scaffolding that later comes down, we have to take care of these bodies. We have to live and take very seriously the way that we live in our bodies. But the real building that we're building is the invisible reality of our soul, uh, building our character, and most, uh, most importantly, our relationship with God. These are things that are uh, accessible to us through figurative language, and particularly as we understand the shadow and the reality and the, the fact that invisible things do exist and that things we can see tell us something about them. That's enough for today, and we're going to pick that up uh, again next time and as we talk more about what it is that is reflected by the material world and what it tells us about the spiritual world. Thanks.